As the Frost King's magical winter ravages the globe, it'll be up to the Scarlet Speedster to stop an international incident. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Flash 767, a continuation to Endless Winter, and find out. So then, as the comic opens up, we're in ancient Greenland, treated to a little bit more insight into the formation of the Justice League BC. Personally, I could not help but get a massive Dungeons & Dragons vibe off this scene. Four heroes meet in a tavern to talk about a great and mythic quest while well, you got lawful evil Black Adam over here drinking his mead. Also, does anyone else find it absolutely hilarious and a little enduring that Black Adam's costume hasn't changed that much in a thousand years? He just took off the pharaoh headdress? As we discovered this issue, it was actually the ancient Swamp Thing who played the biggest hand in getting all these heroes together, and to do so, he kinda, oh, what's the word, creatively told them about the threat that the Frost King was posing and that he worked for Gaia or Geb or Yorb or any of the other old nature gods. And it's a good thing, too, that they all united when they did, because it's at that moment the old Frost King comes a-knockin' and he is not a Carolyn or a Wassalin. Now, back in the present, the Justice League is batting down the hatches during this massive blizzard event and doing everything they can to try and save people. Barry, in a nice little reminder of just how smart he is, goes into great detail about the horrible damage that extreme cold can have on the human body. There's the obvious stuff everyone knows about, like frostbite and hypothermia, but did you know that it can actually also thicken your blood? Furthermore, when you're a speedster, absolute zero does terrible things for your molecules in trying to get up to speed. Meaning that Barry's burning extra power just trying to go at a normal pace here. From there, we transition on over to the UN, where we see Black Adam in his role as King of Conduct decides to address the nations on all their failings. The world is falling into absolute chaos, and the Justice League can barely do anything about it. And if every other nation under the sun is going to drop the ball, then Black Adam is going to actually open the borders of Kondok and let in as many refugees as they want. Although that does beg the question, how the hell can anyone travel at this point if there's a killer blizzard happening? And also, as we'll discover later, Black Adam doesn't actually have a better handle on the blizzard than anyone else in the world, so why would that even behoove anyone? All the same, though, the Justice League is taking this move very seriously and opt to send the Flash to investigate slash babysit Black Adam to make sure he doesn't cause an international incident. Again, I'm not exactly sure how opening your borders during a crisis could cause an international incident, but then I guess I'm also a political science dropout, so you know. The Flash hightails it to Condog, burning up a lot of his excess speed force energy along the way, which is probably why one of those giant ice monsters is able to get the drop on him and knock him on his ass. But don't worry though, when Black Adam says that he's the grand protector of Condog and all of its people, he actually talks the talk and walks the walk, jumping on in to save the Flash. We also see he's not alone either, as a bunch of the villains from the beginning of Endless Winter have also set up shop in Condock now. Which, again, they were on the move and on the run before the killer blizzard happened and before they even knew they could be let in as refugees, so make of that a what you will. Barry comes to in Black Adam's palace. He thanks him for saving him, but it's very clear that the leader of Kondok is trying to bleed the Scarlet Speedster for information on what's going on. Barry says the Justice League and the other heroes can't stop this endless winter unless they can track down the Frost King. The only problem is, is they can't save regular people and look for him at the same time. The Flash also mentions how his speed is dropping along with the temperature and how he could really use a booster shot of power. Luckily for him, Black Adam just so happens to trade in magical lightning bolts. Meaning that after he got the information he wanted, he decides to power Barry up once again so the Flash can be back to full power. This also means he gets the Flash out of his hair too as Barry runs off to check on Iris back in his own city, which does beg the question, didn't the Justice League tell you to watch Black Adam? Now you're already leaving? But perhaps as my favorite part of all of this is Barry talks endlessly in his internal monologue about how he's worried about Iris and he wants to go back and try and save her, but guess what? She was totally capable of handling herself. She took one of Heat Wave's old fire guns and uses it to kill an ice monster that was dogging her. And so that was The Flash, issue number 767, everybody, and overall I thought there was very little meat on these endless winter bones. We learn the most new information about the Frost King and what exactly is going on in the first couple pages, and then after that it's pretty 
much just the Flash running from place to place, not exactly accomplishing much. In fact, if Barry sat around and did nothing, all the same things would have happened. Go investigate Black Adam. Oh, you didn't need to because he was actually on the level. Oh, go save Iris. Oh, you didn't need to. She actually saved herself. Also, it's very clear from the get-go that they want Black Adam to be the breakout character of this endless winter crossover story, but if that was the case, why didn't they just tell the whole thing from his point of view? Why is he a guest character in other people's books when he knows the most and has the most skin in the game with the Frost Gang? Again, not to be too harsh, there's nothing actually wrong with this issue. It's all perfectly adequate and perfectly serviceable. It's just not all that exciting, which is why I can really only give it a 6.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone. I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.